It's your girl T here back with the Tea Time Tuesday video. Yeah? I know y'all are having a beautiful blessed day because you're tea timers. It's absolutely what we do. Our affirmation of the day is, why is the 3D so obsessed with me? Why is the 3D so obsessed with me? It listens to whatever I say. It's my simp. It's crazy how quickly the 3D does whatever I want. I wanted to discuss with y'all today a starting point in the manifestation journey. It's 2024. We're getting what we want, starting from ground zero. So when you all ask me, how do I know where my limited circumstances or my limited beliefs are, I'll go back to, like I said, ground zero. So when you're going throughout your journey and all of us have a reason why we start our conscious manifesting journey. Whether it's we're trying to go after an SP that we lost or money's really tight and we're getting desperate and we search YouTube and we find stuff about conscious manifestation or our life just feels like it's falling to pieces and we stumble upon something that awakens us to this manifestation way of life or some of us watch The Secret and we want to know more. Whatever the case is, something triggered us to dig deeper and figure out conscious manifestation manifestation. We're here now and when we are learning how to consciously manifest again because we were born knowing and now we're just relearning it, uh, we usually do similar we usually do similar actions throughout our journey and I'll tell you what they are. We start out with a with a cause and effect like our SP for example we come in, we want them back so bad. We're coming from a place of lack or desperation. We start watching videos. They say, oh, you can get your SP back in 24 hours, 48 hours. And we put all of our power into that external person and think, if I can just get them back, my life will be perfect. Because we're in such a place of needing, wanting validation that we are loved and that we are seen and that we are heard. We put all our power into that SP. And when we do manifest the, the SP or the money or whatever back in, it usually dissip dissipates just as quickly, like exits out of our reality just as quick because we haven't shifted anything internally about ourselves. We haven't, we haven't uh, solidified inside of us that we do deserve to have a healthy whole love. We haven't solidified that money is, that we are worthy of money or that we deserve to keep money when we receive it. Or we haven't changed the internal programming that allows us to hold on to what it is that we're manifesting. Because as the analogy goes, the 3D mirrors whatever we feel internally. A lot of y'all will say, well, I logically think these things. Why is it showing up this way? Because somewhere in our subconscious programming, we don't really think what we're logically thinking. Because as you all might know, 10% of what we see in front of us comes from our logical mind. The rest is 90%, which is held and moving forward by our subconscious mind. 90% of our reality is actually pushed out by our subconscious. And this is a program that runs in the background. Like when you drive to work every day and you end up at work one day and you look back and go, I didn't even realize how I got to work. Like you've completely blanked out how you ended up at work. This is your subconscious memorizing your route to work and putting you on autopilot to get you there. This is what happens with our beliefs. They're on autopilot. So our subconscious runs it based off of observing what we're thinking and feeling throughout the day. And repetition elongates this process because when we repetitively think of something over and over, our subconscious will show it to us in our 3D continuously because it feels like your energy is flowing this way. I'm going to show you more of it. So when I first started on my journey, as you all know, I did it to manifest an SP. So when I was manifesting the SP, I was focusing all my attention on that person and not working on myself. So I manifested him in three or four times, but he left as quickly as he came in because I got triggered by certain things that he was doing and I didn't change the belief I had behind that triggered effect. And so he exited as quick as he came in. What I learned the third or fourth time was, yes, I do need to work on my beliefs surrounding every area in my life in order to project out a new picture or a new story. So when you are first starting to notice patterns in your reality of people, places, or things, like the same thing is happening repetitively with different people or different situations, you go to one job, you go to another job, the same circumstance keeps coming up. Obviously, that is coming from you. 
So what you want to do at this point when you notice these repetitions is sit down and take five minutes with a piece of paper and draw a circle. Draw a circle on a piece of paper and in the middle of the circle, just like when we were in elementary school, you write your topic. Let's say it's money. You would write money, put a circle around it, and then you can spider vein all the thoughts and beliefs that might come up when you say money. Never enough limited only for rich people certain people are born with wealth other people can't attain it whatever your belief system and thought process is around money you can do a little uh, circle with spider veins to show where you're at energetically in terms of this topic once you have three four five ideas that stemmed from that one main topic, you can sit down and really prove it to yourself that this isn't true. I'm a logical thinker, so I would say money is the circle in the middle. So I would take one of those beliefs, never enough. Well, that's clearly not true. There's tons of money circulating everywhere. The bank has gazillions of dollars there. People are floating money back and forth. Commerce is booming. There's always money to be had. So I know this isn't true. People win things. People receive money without jobs. People get money from all sorts of sources of income. So I know that there, that not enough money is not true. I tell myself this. And then I would make a different belief that serves me. For example, I accept right now it looks like I don't have money, but money is easy for me. Money comes into me from multiple and various places. I always have more than enough money. Whatever belief makes you feel better about the belief that you currently sit at, that's what you would turn into an affirmation or a scripting tool or whatever way you go about rewiring your subconscious belief system. And then you would repeat it over and over whenever that thought comes up, like you're going through your day and you have that thought again. There's never enough money actually there is enough money and I'm gonna have all the money that I need and then some you correct your brain every time it tries to go back to that old thought processy where I see the most where I see people struggle the most is when you're affirming 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 you're taking a shower you're driving you're doing whatever things aren't interrupting your thought process and you're affirming your new reality and it's all good that's not the hard part. Where I see people struggle the most is when you get an opposite, perceived opposite result in your 3D reality. You're affirming you're abundant, you're affirming money is easy for you, and then you get a bill or something breaks and you have to pay for something you weren't expecting. At this point in the process, you have a choice. You could say, that's okay, I have more than enough money so I can fix this thing, I can pay this bill, you can pay it with joy as hard as that might be at the time. You have another fork in the road that you can take which is going back to your old way of thinking. Oh my goodness, I've been affirming for money, it was going so well, now this bill shows up, I'm doing something wrong, it's not working, I'll never be rich, only certain people have money, you can go down that road. This is where a lot of y'all will pick going down the road where you don't get what you want because the 3D has shown you that you're not getting what you want. But y'all are forgetting the 3D is malleable, meaning it can shift and change and it has a lag period a lot of the times. Because you have thought a certain way so long, your 3D or your physical outside world might take a minute to catch up to your new thought process. All your job is in this process is to stay convincing yourself that you are the new person. You are the new abundant person. Money is easy for you. Money has always been easy for you. That's your job to stay on course with that. Not to fall prey to this 3D uh, ideology that came back at you that you used to think but you no longer think. Because the more you react and interact with what's going on outside of you in the 3D, the more you're keeping that fake belief alive. You're giving all your power to that fake belief and saying, I cannot conquer you, you're so real, I'm gonna throw all my energy onto you and my subconscious is gonna show me more of you and then I'm gonna think that I don't have any power. This is 2024, y'all. You guys know how this works. You stay in your new way for as long as it takes until it becomes natural to you, until it becomes a new belief to you, and then you will see your 3D shift. 
Take your 3D out of the way. Get your power away from the 3D. That is not where your power belongs. And I know firsthand, it is very easy to react to this 3D crap that comes your way. I've done it a million times. I'm sure you all have too. But the key is to remind yourself, I'm the master of my reality. I have all the power here. I want this circumstance to look different, so I'm gonna stay in my new thought. It's fine if you react five or 10 minutes, let it all out, and then you go back to your new way of thinking. I'm talking about not staying in that reaction for five, six, seven days, a week, a month, just staying in that old belief. You want new things to happen, we gotta shift to new beliefs. Self-concept is key. Changing the way that we look at ourselves, the way other people look at us, the way that the world interacts with us is going to be the ticket to how things show up for us. So instead of walking in through your 3D reality as I'm going to blame you that this happened, you're so mean to me, so that's why you did this to me. Nobody's doing anything to you. It's simply a game of changing the way that you feel and look at yourself so other people can come in and look and treat you the way that you tell them to. And I heard this from another YouTuber, I totally forget their name or I would give her credit, but she was saying when, you, when a negative circumstance shows up in your 3D, you can say, I'm not gonna assign it a positive or negative um, meaning, I'll just shelf it and circle back to it later. And then you never do. Staying neutral to your 3D circumstances is going to bring in your manifestations quick because if your brain sees that you're not giving attention to those old ass circumstances, it's not going to pay attention to it. It's not going to bring you in more of it. So if you can find a way to neutralize what shows up in your 3D and not give it all your power and attention, you are going to shift smoothly into your new belief system and things are going to look way better for you. That's why I say things like figure out an umbrella affirmation that's going to serve you in these moments of distress. Everything's always working out in my favor. Regardless of the way things look, everything always works out in my favor. That way you're not putting all your focus right into an affirmation about the particular topic, which could cause resistance. You're just saying no matter the way things look, it always works out in my favor and it gives you a sense of calm and peace. And you also can just distract your energy away from what is causing you distress. If that bill is really nagging on your mind, go for a walk, take a bath, do something that has nothing to do with this money circumstance. And when you feel more chill about it, go back into your new thought. I always have enough money. This isn't a big deal. Money comes to me all the time. This bill is paid. If y'all have questions surrounding what I just said, you know what to do. I love y'all, but not as much as you should be loving yourselves. Have a beautiful, blessed Tuesday. Bye.